Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. And today's topic is the transitivity axiom. Recall that we are in our unit on expected utility theory, and we need to have an individual's preferences follow four rules or axioms in order for us to be able to represent that individual's preferences with an expected utility function. We covered completeness last time, today is transitivity, and we'll cover the other two at a later date. Transitivity requires the following. For any three outcomes, x, y, and z, if x is preferred to y, and y is preferred to z, then x must be preferred to z as well. This makes a lot of sense if you look at it visually. Imagine that we know an individual has the following two preferences. He likes winning a million dollars over winning zero dollars, and he likes winning zero dollars over dying a painful death. What should transitivity imply about the individual's preference between winning a million dollars and dying a painful death? Well, if we cut out that middleman, that winning zero dollars, it should be the case that the individual prefers winning a million dollars to dying a painful death, right? If the individual prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars to dying a painful death, erase that middle outcome and we get the individual as preferring winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. This transitivity is exactly as you might remember it from a math class way back in the day, maybe in junior high or very early high school. If A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A should be greater than C as well. That's exactly what's going on here, where winning a million dollars is greater than winning zero dollars. Winning zero dollars is greater than dying a painful death. So you cut out that middleman and you get that winning a million dollars is greater or preferred to dying a painful death. Transitivity also works with indifference. So for example, imagine the individual prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars and finds winning zero dollars to be equally as good as dying a painful death. He is indifferent between those two outcomes. What would transitivity imply about the relationship between winning a million dollars and dying a painful death here? Well, if the individual finds winning zero dollars to be equally good as dying a painful death, but prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, in other words, winning zero and dying a painful death here are interchangeable in this person's eyes, it should be the case that the individual prefers winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. This also works with even more indifference. Here the individual is indifferent between winning a million dollars and winning zero dollars, and he's indifferent between winning zero dollars and dying a painful death. What do you think transitivity would imply here? Well, again, this is like cutting out the middleman. This is like saying A is equal to B and B is equal to C, so A should be equal to C as well. If I'm indifferent between winning a million dollars and winning zero dollars and indifferent between winning zero dollars and dying a painful death, I have to be indifferent between winning a million dollars and dying a painful death. What we're ruling out here with transitivity is something like this. We call this a preference cycle. This individual prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars. He prefers winning zero dollars to dying a painful death. And he prefers dying a painful death to winning a million dollars. That sounds really weird and strange. Think about that. If you ask this individual what his most preferred outcome is, he can't give you a sensible answer. It can't be a million dollars because he prefers dying a painful death. His favorite outcome can't be dying a painful death because he prefers winning zero dollars to that. And his favorite outcome can't be winning zero dollars because he prefers winning a million dollars to that. This does not make any sense whatsoever. And that's what transitivity is trying to rule out. Now, the reason we need to have transitivity in order to be able to use expected utilities is because we want to assign numbers to these outcomes and represent those preferences with those utility numbers rather than thinking about preferences abstractly. So if we have a situation where transitivity is holding and everything is good, then we could say that maybe this individual's utility for winning a million dollars is three, his utility for winning zero dollars is two, and his utility for dying a painful death is one. This gets these preference orderings on par with the greater than equal signs. Three is greater than two, and two is greater than one, so we have the individual preferring winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars, and winning zero dollars to dying a painful death. 
And if the individual's preferences follow transitivity, well, three is greater than one, so the individual should be preferring winning a million dollars to dying a painful death. If transitivity is violated, though, we have a situation where somehow one would need to be greater than three, and as it turns out, numbers just do not work like that. That would be bad. Wrapping things up here, what about the plausibility of transitivity? Well, I really hope that people have transitive preferences. In fact, it's kind of embarrassing if you, in an interview about your preferences, say at some point, maybe accidentally, maybe you didn't actually think about this, but you said this, that you have a preference cycle, that you like A to B, you like B to C, and you like C to A. If you were to say something like that, it would be embarrassing. If someone were to point it out to you, you would probably want to correct yourself and think to yourself, geez, why did I say that? That's kind of weird. I think what I should have said is this. You'd probably want to recover from that and get rid of that preference cycle if it were ever pointed out to you. So I think, again, that having a transitive preference inside of an individual is actually a very reasonable thing. So I think we're actually pretty good here on transitivity. That wraps up this lecture on transitivity. We've crossed off two of our preference rules. But before we jump into independence over lotteries and continuity, we need to talk about a couple of other things. And so in the next lecture, I'm going to cover what we get when we have both completeness and transitivity together without getting to independence over lotteries and continuity. Continuity, As it turns out, completeness and transitivity by themselves imply something important, and I'm going to talk about that next time. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you then. Take care.